currency risk management transaction exposure so in this session we'll uh, explain what is currency risk and how does it emerge we'll also see an illustration on how a currency risk emerges so first what is currency risk and how does it emerge from the relative valuation of currencies emerge currency risk this is where changes result in unpredictable losses or gains where the changes themselves involve investments profits and dividends converted into foreign currencies here also investors reduce currency risk by using hedges which are designed to offset many currency related losses or gains now we'll see uh, how an illustration on how currency risk emerges so to recap a typical illustration may be a trader buying german stocks for let us say 10 euros after this purchase if the euro depreciates in exchange rate from 1.5 usd to 1.3 usd the investor when he sells the german stock is believed to realize a 13% loss on the transaction unless he hedges it using a forward contract or option for knowing how to hedge it using a forward contract uh, or option there is a session on hedging adverse price movements using option you can take a look at that session next what we will see what are the different types of currency risk ideally there are three different types of currency risk and are namely transaction exposure translation exposure and economy exposure so in this session we will briefly explain what is the meaning of transaction exposure now what is transaction exposure risk so this is the risk that is encountered when the firm engages in commercial transactions where the currency of the transaction is foreign for managing this risk we use hedging with money market hedges the other method may be hedging with futures forwards and options so that is what basically it uh, it is when when we actually deal with transaction exposures now money market hedge is actually used to hedge the risk associated with currency risk in transaction exposure so this method is also called by the name synthetic forward contract <coughs> in this method it uses a combination of call option and put option at the same strike price which this money market hedge uses for hedging so this would mean the combination of call option and put option will be at the same strike price at the same time to expire to create an offsetting position in the event there is a currency or exchange risk so this money market hedge basically employs call option and put option as is defined in the diagram at the same strike price on a particular day so there is also a net optimum premium that a money market hedge investor needs to pay the seller which is in fact a premium to compensate for seller's obligation upon buyers or investors right to sell an option or buy it now for illustration purposes let us take a look at the diagram here we actually see hedging currency risk with money market hedge <coughs> it is also called as synthetic forward contract so we will see what are the different <coughs> mechanisms which are employed in a synthetic forward contract so there is obviously there is call option there is put option and this both these options will be there at the same strike price on a specific day so here in this example or in this illustration uh, we, are, we are considering a money market hedge which is a synthetic long forward contract on xy z in stock at 40 dollar strike price for june 30 2023 so there's a call option which is with a dollar 40 strike price with expiry on june 30 2023 that we actually write we also write there is a put option which is written with dollar 40 strike price with expiry on june 30 2023 so we have call option and put option for the same price same strike price for the same day now on that day on june 30 2023 many things can happen one thing which can happen is that if the stock price can go above strike price 
So in this case, what the investor does is, this is also part of the arrangement, the investor does call or buy at option price because of call option and buy the stock cheap. So since the stock price is above strike price, investor can get it at the strike price because he has a call option. So investor does call or buy the uh, stocks at option price because of call option and buys the stock cheap. So buying happens. Let's consider what other thing can happen. The stock price can go below the strike price, in which case investor does put or sell at option price. Investor has options, uh, which is sell option at strike price, $40 strike price. So he basically sells the stock at, uh, op, at uh, the, uh, we act he actually sells the stock because he has a put option at $40 strike price. And he gets a lot of money actually because the strike price is below here. And then what he does is he uses that extra money he generated to again buy stock at the st uh, strike price so that he gets more stocks. So in both the cases, what happens is that the investor buys the stock when hedging currency risk with money market hedge or synthetic forward contract. So that is what basically happens. Investor buys more stock with hedging currency risks using money market hedge or synthetic forward contract. Now, next we'll take a look at managing transaction exposure through operational techniques. What are the different operational techniques used to manage transaction exposure? So the first one is by sharing currency risk, by doing risk shifting, by doing in reinvoice centers and by leading and lagging. So we'll briefly see how we actually do each of this. Adopting operational strategies and techniques that have the power to offset existing foreign currency exposure. These operating techniques are effective in places where there are no forward contracts or futures available for a particular currency chosen. So the main strategies as I was explaining is one of them is sharing currency risk, which is the first one. So sharing of currency risk among two parties to a transaction is an effective way currency risk is shared. It works on the principle that one party's loss is another party's gain. Usually this adjustment works on the premises that any change in the exchange rate from agreed rate on the date of transaction will be split between two parties that are on either side of the transaction. So by working and selecting on a bare spot rate, the adjustment yields avoidance of currency risk for a particular transaction in question by sharing the losses and gains which results from such currency transaction. So they actually bear the losses and gains resulting from currency transactions. That's the first method which is sharing currency risk. The next method is risk shifting. What happens in risk shifting? Obviously, the only way to reduce the uh, transaction exposure is not to have an exposure at all. So that risk shifting works on that basis. Now, how this can be done? This is done by invoicing to the extent possible all transactions in home currency. A firm avoids transaction exposure altogether. But this would not work for everyone since dealing with a foreign currency sometimes becomes inevitable. In such cases, a firm is made responsible to bear all the currency risk wherever foreign currency is involved and this is making sure the firm does it at the lowest cost. So that is basically what is risk shifting. The trans transaction exposure is managed by the, by the firm by choosing it to offer at the lowest cost. Next is reinvoice centers. How uh, operational techniques are managed using transaction exposure. In reinvoice centers, it's a corporate subsidiary managing in a location all transaction exposure from trade that emerges out of infra-company activities. Here the manufacturing center sells goods to a foreign distributor who is affiliated through a reinvoicing center. The main difference is that in the reinvoicing center, the affiliate transactions are carried out in the affiliate's local currency and also the reinvoicing center absorbs all the transaction exposure. And that is what is done in reinvoicing centers. And lastly, it is leading and lagging. 
playing with the lead and lag times in a one other way is where how currency exposure is avoided. So this is done by first lowering the gains and losses in currency transaction by playing with the timing of foreign currency cash flows. Leading is when if the foreign currency in which an existing nominal contract is denominated is appreciating, liabilities are immediately paid off and the receivables are taken in later. Lagging. What is done in lagging? Lagging is just the opposite when the coincidental indicators are looked back or past transactions are analyzed to know more about the trends in the future. So these are some of the ways which are operational techniques for managing transaction exposure in currency risk. Hope this session was clear. Thanks.